gives him the gold medal, 19.75. Now back to the unevens, where this is Dagmar Kirsten. She is from Kotpustis, Germany. Counts on the high bar. Kip, cast, hop to a Jaeger. That's a front flip done by one of her male compatriots a few years ago. And a reverse hect. Shoot through down to the low bar. There's that required part going back down to the low bar. They don't stay on there very long, though. This event is resembling the high bar more and more. More and more, absolutely. There's two giants and a toe on pike front with a half turn. Very good dismount. And Dagmar Kirsten needs a 9.89 to beat her teammate Martina Jentsch in this event. Her preliminary score is 9.875. If she does 9.89 or better, she'll take the gold. And here's a giant toe on pike front with a half turn for that dismount. And she really digs her heels in to stick that. Takes a little bit of a hop. A fine landing. Her score, 9.913. She gets the gold medal with a total of 19.788. Peter headed downstairs and spoke with the USA's Christy Henrich. I'm with Christy Henrich. Christy, you had a, a very good routine on the uneven bars, especially the landing. You really hit that cold. Now, what did you feel about the routine as a whole? Um, I think I could have had a better mount because I hit my foot on the low bar. Mm -hmm. And, um, but other than that, I was real solid. That was good. Now, coming into this competition, you just finished the Swiss Cup, which was a meet just a few days ago. So you've really been on the road running around. You had a good competition. You were third all around. Uh, how do you feel staying in Europe so much and getting all this competition? Um, I think it's very good uh, getting people to know who I am and my name and all. But I wish I could have placed a little higher in this meet so people would know me a little better. But um, I did very well. You did. You've got many years ahead of you. Now, going into 1988, what is your game plan for your training? My game plan this year, uh, next semester I won't be going to school. I will be tutored, and I will be having three workouts a day for the Olympics. That's important. Now, you know you're making a lot of sacrifices, and yes. people need to realize the type of effort that you people put forth. Well, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, it's a very good routine. Thank you. Christy Henrich, the sophomore in high school, taking some time off. The results of the women's uneven parallel bars. East Germany taking first and second. On the men's ring competition, Shapochkin of the Soviet Union gets the gold, while West Germany's Aguilar takes the silver. Here along the cobblestone streets behind the modern mall is a Christmas village, specifically erected just for the holiday season. Now, as I said, shopping usually in Stuttgart takes place in malls with all of the modern conveniences. But for the holiday season, these specialty shops are designed for the Christmas shopper. If you cannot be home for Christmas, let me recommend Germany, specifically Stuttgart. Gottlieb Daimler of Stuttgart invented the internal combustion automobile back in 1885. Automobile production has been centered here ever since. The old and new mesh hand in hand here in Stuttgart. Modern shopping districts abound in this city located in southwestern Germany. Swabians are what native Stuttgarters are called. They speak a sing-song type of German that some northerners claim they cannot understand. But food is a universal language, and when its delicious aroma permeates a crisp winter day, well, everyone, Swabian or not, has reason to smile. Hey, that guy's not from Germany. That's Peter Widmar. He's taking, or should I say, tasting a little break. Today's rain will be turning to snow very shortly, but this weather does not dampen the spirits of these shoppers, for it is Christmas time, and the outdoor hutches are filled with dolls, ornaments, and gifts that would tempt anyone to park with the Deutschmark. But it's the food that seems to make the shopping more enjoyable. Bratwurst, fresh vegetables, and pastries are some of the fare on hand. And, well, here's Peter with a soft pretzel. Leave it to Peter to come to Germany and eat pretzels. The children are not interested in the food. In fact, the children of Stuttgart love to go shopping because there are rides, just like a carnival, located downtown, rides that are open year-round. The noise of toy trains, the kinds that kids can actually ride, fill the air for a different sound at Christmas time. Joining me now is Klaus and Alexander Becker, and I'm going to ask them in German what they want for Christmas. Was möchtest du für Weihnachten? Also, ich wünsche mir Reitzubehör und vier weitere Bände von Bille und Zottel, die Lego-Burg und ein Zinnritter. Lots of things. And Klaus? Ich wünsche mir Reitzubehör und dann noch viel Lego. That's all? Und noch viel Autos. 
That's as good. Merry Christmas. A unique delight for the German gourmet is to stop at a sausage shop and order a meat pastry pie. Somehow I knew it would just be a matter of time before Peter ingested some of this delicacy. Frankly, I didn't know he had such a large appetite. How does he manage to keep his weight down? This is a diet of an Olympic gold medalist. Pass the bratwurst quick. It's time for me to weave my way through the crowd and enjoy some of the holiday decorations. As you can see, I have finally caught up with Peter, and you have been eating your way through Stuttgart. Tell me about the food. Well, I sampled the bratwurst, and that was nice and spicy. Uh, I had some pretzels. They were great, just as good as New York. I had something that I really couldn't identify. We won't talk about that, but I've concluded that still my favorite food in Germany is German chocolate. Ah, looks quite tasty. Mm -hmm. But Peter, you missed it all. When in Germany, one must do as the Germans do. Now outside on a chilly December day, hot wine is nice. But I'll take a hot brow, please. How much do I owe you? Okay. Hot wine, hot brow. When in Germany, do as the Germans do. <laughs> Boy, a hot wine and a hot brow, Leander. I'm glad I drove home. So am I, because I enjoyed every drop. When we come back, we will continue with our coverage of the 1987 DTB Cup. Our rotation now includes balance beam for women, vaulting for men. And this is Danielle Silivash of Romania. Four feet, five inches tall, just 62 pounds. She brings a preliminary score of 9.8 with her into this event. I'm continually amazed at the level of difficulty in balancing. It's just getting tougher and tougher. Well, in the 1984 Olympics, we really saw a lot of tumbling on the balance beam, and now there seems to be a little bit more of a move back to the dancing element. And there really is, and they've made that a requirement because uh, the girls realize they're getting a lot of credit for these tumbling skills. There's a back handspring, back layout. Very, very difficult, and they're doing so many of those skills that they were kind of getting away from some of the dance elements, so now they've made some specific requirements with dance. Her 9.8 preliminary score actually had her in a three-way tie for first place. So we're about to see some very tough balance beam performances. It's two leaps. A full turn, that's one of those dance elements. You'll see a lot of full turns on beam. But you don't see the double turns. No, and they don't want to take the chance. They'd rather wow the crowd. Another back handspring walkout, back layout, step out. Split leap, little bobble. Very sturdy, though. That seems to be what separates the United States from the Eastern Bloc nations. The balance beam, solidness on the beam. And a double back flip. Well, in the past, of course, I think some of the girls were doing a lot more dance, and, uh, and that helps. I think that's one area that the women are particularly strong in our country is they try to include more dance on beam. Your dismount, two back handsprings, right into a double back flip. Now that's really tough when you're punching out of that double back flip. Some girls do a stepping motion into it, and your toes have to be right on that beam. Nine eight the preliminary, nine eight two five. That routine score, nineteen point six two five. The score for Danielle Silibash. This is Jurgen Brummer of Stuttgart. The men will execute two vaults. This is his first, and that's a. Basically a laid out Cuervo vault. He tucked in at the very end, but he tried to lay it out. It's a very tough vault. A little bit piked. Now what he does, he does a handspring, half turn into a back flip. He kind of tucks in at the end, but a strong landing. Takes a lot of heel drive. Now notice that horse. You see that little uh, mushroom type top on it, that's springs. The new uh, vaulting horses have springs underneath them just like the floor. Now you said earlier in this telecast that there will be or might be a change in the vaulting apparatus for men and then possibly for women. How would it change? We see that long horse that the men vault over vertically. How will the the matter change? Well, I think the horse won't be as long and then it'll be wider so that in placing the hands, for example, on a round off vault, 
uh, they'll be able to do that like the women do. Uh, but one thing they have to be careful is that they have to make sure that that fits into the basic uh, base of a horse so that uh, people throughout the world don't have to run out and buy whole new vaulting horses. That becomes very expensive. And it's a layout Sukahara, not quite as difficult now in judging. Took a little bit of a hop and a step at the end. We should add that the men are not allowed to do the handspring vaults that we saw the women do because the horse is facing the other that's way. Right, that's right, that's right. Here's a layout souk again. It takes that hop. That will not get as high a score as his first vault. You're right, he didn't. 9.55. His preliminary score was 9.7. You saw his total, 19.25. Now let's go back to the balance beam to a young lady who's been competing since the age of seven, Eugenia Golea. And this is her favorite event. And she's beautiful on balance beam. Her moves are so deliberate. Quick turns, good tumbling elements. Back handspring, back layout, back layout. Excellent. It shows that she's been in this sport for 11 years. I don't mean to repeat myself, but look at her moves, how deliberate she is. Every trick is just right into the movement. She doesn't hesitate in any way. Interesting combination. Back handspring, step out, back layout, landing with legs together. You'd never know that she's four feet off the ground on a wooden beam that's four inches wide. <laughs> I'm glad men don't have to do that. I'm glad broadcasters don't. <laughs> She's right on in this routine. I really see no mistakes. Just little things here and there. And this is one reason why the remaining women won the world championships in the team competition. They were very solid in this event. Three back handsprings into a layout double fold. Very, very tough dismount. Virginia Golea competing on what is obviously her favorite event, the balance beam. Now this is one of her most difficult tumbling passes. It's a back hamstring, back layout, back layout. Looks like her hand touched the beam a little bit. Now here's her dismount sequence. Back hamstring, step out, back hamstring, step out, back hamstring, step out, layout, double turn. She's got to be right on on every one of those skills. Now she was tied with her teammate with a 9.8 going in. She needed a 9.8 two pot to beat her, and she gets it, 9.875. Galea is our leader, but we'll have more balance beam competition after these important messages. Me is Silvio Kroll. He is the 1987 world champion in this event. He's always been powerful and bold. There's a laid out Cuervo. Kind of a low land, took a little hop forward, but his body stayed stretched till the very end, and that's tough. His preliminary score is 9.6. He needs a 9.65 average to take the lead. Now this is a Cuervo vault named after a Cuban gymnast, Cuervo. Here is a handspring with a half turn, laid out backflip. Low Lenny almost touches hands down there, and I wonder if he didn't touch. Let's take a look at his hands again. What's the deduction for touching? Well, it's it, it can be up to five tenths of a point. Oh, it looks like he touched his hands. Silvio Kroll has been in gymnastics for 15 years. He is 22 years old. Now, the second vault has to be a different family, so uh, he has to do, uh, for example, a layout Sukahara, a round-off entry vault, uh, something like that. The man he wants to beat is Jürgen Brumer, Brumer of Stuttgart, Kroll from East Germany. Oh, nice. and a handspring front with a one-and-a-half twist. Very, very difficult. Took a step, but that's a much more difficult vault. He needs a 9.65 to overtake Brumer. Here's the handspring. Front with a one and a half twist. Zero's in on the landing, and that's really not that bad. Sure, he took a step, but he's really spinning there. And the score is 9.68. So he is our leader, Silvio Kroll, claiming the gold in the vaulting competition. Now let's go back to the balance beam where a young lady from Czechoslovakia, Iveta Polokova, is competing. As she punches right to a handstand as a walkover. Here's two leaps. Setting up for another tumbling pass. 
Now that's a different pass. That's a front flip with a half twist. We call that a Barani.